Today I have something a little different to show you guys, something for those pesky cables always messing with our builds. This is where the D-Wire relay comes into play, with its mission of putting an end to cable clutter, at least when it comes to radiator fans. And the way it works is really simple, it's just a long PCB with several 4-pin connectors. The idea is that you stick this on the side of your radiator, plug the fans in and then just have one single cable going to your motherboard or controller of choice. It sounds really great in practice and I really like the minimalist look of the relay. It comes in pretty much all the radiator sizes and variants depending on whether you want to go with a push-pull fan configuration or not. D-Wire was super kind to send me a couple of the relays for the video and I'll be testing two of the more common sizes, the 240 and 280. I'm going to start by mounting the 240 version of the relay to an alpha cool radiator. The Arctic P12 fans I'm using here feature medium length cables and I was curious to see how I could cable manage in such a way that it makes the most out of the relay. Of course, this doesn't mean that some creativity isn't still needed, but I found that wrapping the cable around the fan and securing it behind the mounting screws could be a great way to tidy it up, leaving off just enough so that it can connect to the relay. Then it was time to mount the relay to the side of the radiator. It's immediately clear that the foam pad is rather thick. I was worried about the strength of the adhesive, but it's actually insanely strong. Once this is on, I don't really see any way of it coming off by itself. The foam is really thick though, and I was expecting a much thinner overall package. Unfortunately, as I discovered after I took one off, the reason for such a thick padding is because of the way the headers are mounted on the PCB. There's quite a bit of metal protruding on the other side, so there needs to be adequate padding or otherwise you could be shorting the connection, if it were to come in contact with any metal surface, such as the side of the radiator. No issue here, but we'll see in a moment how well this plays out when mounted inside a case. Of course, turning it on works as expected. The only thing to keep in mind here is that if you're connecting a lot of fans, you should pay attention to what your motherboard header is rated for in terms of amps. Anyway, so let's try a real world ITX build scenario. Here we have the Form C1 custom loop from my previous video, and it serves to illustrate the point I was alluding to earlier. Because of the thickness of the XSPC radiator and the thickness of the relay itself, there's no real way to put the mesh panels back on the T1. Which is really a shame because I really like the look of it and it would have been a great use case here. Let's try a different radiator and a different case. Here I have another very popular 280 radiator, the 280 GDS from Hardware Labs. This one has a side which isn't perfectly flat. This isn't really ideal for the relay, but it could still be mounted with a bit of elbow grease. As with the 240 version, I was trying different positioning of the fans to see how well the cables could be managed here. I'm using both an Arctic and an Noctua, which have slightly different cables coming out of them. I wanted to see how well this would work in the Meshlicious, a case I'm going to feature in a different video, hopefully sooner rather than later. Unfortunately, it quickly became clear to me that we're going to have the same issue as before. The radiator is really thick and it goes right up to the edge of the case, so mounting the relay is a no-go. You could get creative and find a way to mount it, maybe on the inside of the case, but then it begs the question, does it really simplify cable management or make your life easier? So at least with these two examples, the use case just wasn't there unfortunately. Um, that said, I do think the potential of the relays could be realized with larger radiators, think 360 radiators or push-pull configurations, but then you would still need to make sure you have the extra width available to mount them. And if you do have the extra room, then it's also likely you have a rather large case, perhaps with a large chamber that's intended just for cables. So then, that the wire finds itself in a pretty niche space. I do think it's a very cool idea, but it just needs the right setup for it to shine. That's it for this one, as always, thanks for watching and lots of thanks to DeWire for making this video possible.